in this show, we talk about the difference between a good tripod and a not good tripod. A bad tripod, then. Yes. Welcome to the Tech and Teaching Podcast, where we teach you all the tech that you need to know to take your podcast or live stream to the next level. I am Eric Allgood, Director of Productions for Strive, and this is Jordan Huebner, AV Specialist. For StriveAV.com. You've got to remember to say your website. StriveAV.com. Today we're talking about tripods and the good uses for them and why. I, I, really, there's, there's three main questions that we're trying to answer here today, Jordan. What does a fluid head tripod mean? Why do you need a fluid head tripod? Because as we have seen in our experiences, you absolutely need a fluid head tripod. And what happens when you don't have a good fluid head tripod, nor do you use it correctly? Those are all good answers or questions that we should answer. That we should answer. Okay, yep. so so first and foremost, we got to talk about why. Uh, or, no, we got to go back to the first what is a fluid head tripod? What does that mean? If somebody's looking at going to any retailer and they see photo tripod and they see fluid head tripod, what does fluid head actually mean? It means it has fluid in it. It's made for video production to create smooth panning and smooth um, tilting, just all, all those camera movements so you're not looking like a sprinkler, basically. Yes. Um, we'll talk about a sprinkler in a second. Oh, cool. um, so that's what it is. There's literally fluid in that head, yep. and it makes all those movements smoother. So why do we need one? So that you have a sm smoother camera pr uh, camera movement and make it look more pro professional. I thought you were going to go back to the sprinkler. So we don't look oh, like a sprinkler. Oh, okay, okay. So right. I, I say this as a person who has used one of those sprinkler-type uh, tripods. And this, this is actually not, not one of them, but we have, we have props today. That is is not a fluid head tripod at all, but it does have some of the properties of a fluid head. But what you'll notice is that there is li literally nothing stopping this this head from from twisting and panning or tilting in that regard. Uh, if we loosen, uh, actually, it's this one. This would be categorized as a photo tripod. Yes, it Just would. for those interested. Maybe maybe that should have been our question. What is the difference between a video tripod and a photo tripod? Well, the photo tripod is just meant to stay sta stationary. You get it to your shot that you want it, and then you lock it all down, and you're done. But a video, we're going to obviously be moving, following the action and stuff. So that's kind of where they – and then the video tripod has those built-in features that make it um, better – to pan, tilt, and just control the camera. Now, there is one thing that we should say that comes with all of the fluid head nests, is that they are, uh, if you're just going straight up dollar for dollar, they are a different price range than mm -hmm. a photo tripod. This photo tripod uh, probably was purchased at uh, a, a store that uh, sells pretty much everything under the sun for like 20 bucks. And, and you now, got all twenty dollars, and I got right all here. twenty dollars of it, and and actually, you know, when you put a little cell phone mount on the top to take family pictures, it actually works pretty good for that. For the use that it's been designed for, it's great. It, it's great, but if we if we're going to try to put a camcorder, a video camera, on top of this thing and use this tripod to move back and forth, to pan and to tilt for our broadcast. Uh, we're, we're not going to have a lot of fun. We don't have a long arm. We don't have, we don't have a, the fluid head. So now we have to unlock everything, basically. And now the steadiness of our shot is suddenly completely dependent on the ability to keep my hand very steady on the tripod handle so that we don't uh, have shaking in the video. Instead of letting the fluid head do the work of balancing the, tripod, the camcorder and the, the rest of the tripod head itself. And then uh, we should also talk about the, uh, the last question that we're going to answer is uh, what happens when you don't have a good tripod? And we'll see if we get some, some examples, but, uh, um, but we have stories about bad tripods uh, for both of us. So 
uh, we've, we've kind of discussed already what uh, what does a fluid head mean. So it means there's literally fluid in the head. And Jordan, you have actually prop a prop behind you. And I'll get this one. It's show and tell today, folks. We didn't... Uh, well, we didn't tell you. if it's you're not watching us on there. YouTube, this is uh, this is going to be more more fun and engaging than just listening to the podcast. But we're going to try to talk you through everything that we got to. Well, here, let's see. It you got a beefier frame to start off with, so yes. it's it's made it's hefty. It's made to last. Um, but then the the magic is up here in this piece right here where the uh, the fluid is actually contained. So did we spill something on this, or does fluid actually coming out of this right now? Um, I think we spilled I think off. Hoosier decided to eat some McDonald's or something and then mess with this, so it's a little greasy. Um, it is greasy. So as we kind of talked about with the uh, the photo tripod, they're just kind of, well, they're, they're, they're $20. I mean, they're, they can be cheaper. They can be get really expensive, but um, they're made just to hold something, and so they, they tend to be lightweight, um, and these, uh, from what we we've kind of shown here, they're a little bit, they're heftier, they're bit they're heavier duty, and then so they're they're made to hold the weight of the actual camera, and um, each fluid tripod has their own weight specifications that they're able to hold a video camera that's up to seven pounds, eight pounds, ten pounds, what, whatever. And so obviously the the heavier camera is or your camera rig, um, as well build out through through the episodes here um you kind of have to fit your your tripod to that but for the most part what we've seen is is this tripod um does really well and then you're able to balance um with with your plate here that you will the plate that you mount to your camera you're able to slide that back and forth depending on where how much stuff you have on your camera how heavy it is so that it it's going to sit level for you and your angle also that you're trying to film at. We've been in a yep. lot of different yep. arenas, gyms, football stadiums, the crow's nest. Every every place is a little different. So the ability, you know, sometimes you you have to, just by necessity, you have to set up closer to your field of action, whether that's the football field or the basketball court, and you'll get more of a, we're kind of on top of the field. And so sometimes we need to be able to tilt almost, mm -hmm. almost straight down, really. Like we're looking out the window and looking down. Um, that's not something you think about if you're just standing in the press box, but a camera needs to be able to tilt all the way down sometimes uh, to get that view right along the near sideline. And so, like Jordan said, being able to balance that camera so that it's uh, it's a little easier, and depending on what else uh, you put on there. One of our shows I know coming up, we're going to talk about um, uh, a lily put monitor. So it's a it's a camera assist screen basically, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, the particular thing that we'll talk about is many has many uses, but one of the uses that we found for that is um, you actually mount a bar to your tripod plate, and then you mount the camera and that screen on the, the onto the bar. Well, that really changes the weight uh, and its distribution on the tripod head itself. So you got to do again that little balancing act with the uh, with the plate, and it makes it uh, makes it a lot easier to use. Yep. And I can't wait to talk about the the lily puts because we have we have found that they are just really really handy. <laughs> they they make things they make life easier, much easier. So um, we've talked now a little bit about why you need a, a fluid head tripod. What happens when you don't have a good tripod, Jordan? Well, there's a lot of things that can happen as we've kind of seen over the over the years. Um, yeah, it they can range from it literally looks like a sprinkler as you're trying to shift from one side of the quarter field to the other, or it, a lot of them don't have, if you're using a photo tripod, they, they may not have the best leveling mechanism to get that, uh, that camera completely level that you're fine at mid court then, but then once you, you go left or right, you start getting that cant either way. And so it, it can, be a little bit of an eyesore, I guess you right. could say. And and that shows up less, you know, as we were recording this, that shows up less during basketball season because typically we're not panning back. You we're not panning a long way, uh, especially if we're in a small gym. Actually, we probably pan more in a smaller gym than we do in a larger gym. Yeah. Now that I think about it, but it really shows up if you play eleven man football and your and your setup is fairly close to the the edge of the sideline uh, when you shoot down to one goal line or the other, even in eight-man football or six-man that's only 80 yards, 
Uh, when you start to shoot something down by the goal line uh, and you're very close to the field, if your tripod head is not level, your your view will literally go sideways. It will go cattywampus is what it is. And, 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 and it's, it's, it doesn't – it's not readily apparent because you can – you can have all of the legs extended the same way. And that's what's nice about most of these fluid head tripods is uh, if I can turn this just a little bit, we can actually we can actually loosen the head itself and and level the head independently from all of the legs. So that is something that uh, we have discovered is awesome. And the really good ones will actually have a bubble built into the head itself so you can get that level, that bubble actually level, and then lock it down. Then lock the head down while not not affecting, I'm going to turn it the correct way, uh, while not affecting the ability to adjust the pan and the tilt resistance or locking that down. It So it is more expensive, but it is far and away worth it every single time. Yeah, especially just on the, the leveling piece, um, you kind of have to, on the other ones, you have to adjust the legs and so please don't adjust it via the legs. Get it somewhat close with your legs adjustment, but then do all your fine tuning with the with the fluid head, the the actual adjustment to to make it level. So right. um, that'll make life a lot easier if you if you do it that way. So that's kind of tip one is to make sure it's level. But before we get into more of the tips, okay. we're going to take a short commercial break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about more tips on how to use your fluid head tripod because we can't just have it. We actually have to use it correctly. So this is the Tech and Teaching Podcast. When students choose Midland University, they become a part of something bigger than themselves. Midland University sees the talented students at Strive Schools as fitting for Midland's programs. That is why Midland University is offering 25 renewable Strive scholarships, totaling $92,000. New this year, students also have the opportunity to earn college credit for their participation in Strive. To learn more, head to midlandu.edu slash strive. Welcome back to the Tech and Teaching Podcast. I'm Eric, that's Jordan, and we've got tips now for using your fluid head tripod because it's not just enough to have it, Jordan. We've kind of given one tip already, but uh, we want to talk more about some of the tips on actually using your fluid head tripod for some that are maybe making the jump from a camera tripod, which is meant to be steady, or it has, I, I love the ones that you can, here's how you can tell you have a nice camera tripod, is that you have three tiny little, uh, they're basically screws with a tiny little handle, and they stick out about this far from the uh, from the actual tripod head. That's how you know you have a camera, a photo tripod, but it might still be hefty. It might still be have some, uh, some weight to it. But if you have short little stubby uh, handles and that's all you have and you're trying to maneuver the camera with just those handles, that's a photo tripod. Please don't use that. So if we're making the jump from that kind of a tripod or the old creaky plasticky one that when you try to move, it literally moves and sticks and then you get a click, 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 click. You literally get the feeling and the sound of it. We're moving on to the new one. Well, now we got to practice with it. And that's, that is important to get to your, your setup, whether it's a football field, an arena, whatever it is, and just practice your movements like like how smooth can I move this thing back and forth? And what you'll find most likely is that it does not take a lot of effort. You don't have to have a death grip on this thing to be able to smoothly move it back and forth. In fact, I have found in my pra- in, in my use cases, the lighter I touch this, the smoother I can move it, actually. And what that does is, again, if you have listened or watched our first episode, we're talking about zoom controllers and having the zoom in and out being a live and breathing thing. We don't want to move straight to one spot and then, and then have a hard stop, right? But if we have a smooth tripod head and we are having a really light touch to it, then we can, as we stop on one end of the court or field, it has a natural, it's like a soft closed door, or drawer in, in newer mm-hmm. houses, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so you can get basically where you want to stop, and then as you let go, it will just kind of, it's hard to explain, but it is the, a soft stop instead yeah. of a hard stop. Yeah. We're not going up against something and stopping hard. We're, we're actually stopping slowly. So practicing that, understanding what that is, understanding where 
and how you need to pan and tilt. Sometimes, like we said, the closer you are to a court, you might need to tilt down at the appropriate time. You might need to tilt, especially if we're zooming correctly, uh, to build on last week's episode. If we're zooming correctly, we're always going to have to be panning and tilting. Um, If we're just moving back and forth, we're not going to have as engaging of a live stream. Um, but we have to be able to uh, to tilt as well. So that's uh, that's tip one. Well, I would kind of add to that um, your your the kind of your leverage here as well. You know, making. I mean, obviously, you want your your handle here to be kind of comfortable for you. But I mean, if you can get this out straighter, this is just right. It is what it yeah. is. Oh, and th- this loosens by the way. You can have you can kind of tilt it to wherever wherever best fits you, and you can get it. I mean, you've even said this before when. When you get two handles on it, oh, yeah. then then you can go real smooth. Yeah. But um, just kind of making sure you're comfortable, because if you're not comfortable, then something may not look quite right. If you're always having to strain or kind of goes to how all of this kind of works together to yep. make it easier for you. Uh, but that is that is tip number one. Yeah. So uh, tip number two, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but um, just making sure that it's balanced, no matter what kind of gear you have, whether it's the camera and a a, uh, a monitor or um, even a zoom controller can add weight to the how it how it functions but just finding that sweet spot of where the weight front or you know obviously if you're if you're going to have the weight too far to the front it's going to nose dive and then you're going to be looking at the ground but if you have it too far back you're going to be out looking up at the the big blue sky so just finding that that medium there where it sits where you would like it for your use case. What we're, I guess, trying to get at is, you know, if, if you're fighting the camera, always, oh, I'm always having to pull it up or I'm always having to push it down or something, adjust it. Um, slide the camera forward or backward. And um, some, of, some of the tripods will have, um, actually, I will let you, I was going to get into the the uh, pan and tilt locks and stuff like that. You were so going to steal my thunder. I'm sorry. I saw that. No, yeah. Part number or tip number three: use your pan and tilt locks when you do want to lock it down. There will be times, perhaps uh, pre-game, halftime, post-game, where you don't want the uh, the complete freedom of uh, of the fluid head, and you actually say, "No, I do want to lock something down." Well, most of these fluid head tripods have, uh, for instance, this is the is the um, pan lock on the back here and they are variable resistance so if you crank it all the way down it's going to be very difficult to move that very stationary to go on your pan which is left and right you can also on the same in the same vein lock down your tilt by uh, screwing that one down and so between those two so you can see I've got my pan loosened but now I have my tilt locked and again if we're just starting out maybe we have a rookie uh, camera operator Perhaps having the pan loosened up with the tilt locked down, maybe that's the way to start for that particular operator with the idea that, hey, as you get more comfortable using the, the camera gear and the tripod, loosening the, the tilt, and now we can have uh, those smooth movements. And what, again, what's nice is I can loosen it all the way and I can have as much movement possible as what the fluid head actually has. And some are different that you can actually adjust the amount of resistance. This one isn't one of those, um, but you, we actually have a, a more broadcast one where you can actually adjust the amount of resistance within the pan and the tilt. Yeah. The tripod legs are also very important, Jordan. That's that's tip number five about the legs. Yeah, this could go with, well, a lot of these tips could go for any tripod. But having them on something that's sturdy, um, that you you don't want it on a like a fourteen foot two by four. That's just kind of <laughs> I don't know. That's the best analogy I can get right now. But you know, just so that you don't have that extra rock because you you can set it up on a on a bleacher or something like that. But as people move and stuff, you're gonna get that little vibration. So you start with a solid foundation and or something sturdy at least that uh, will help minimize your your, your movements on the camera too, or the jitters, I should say. Right. And we have seen some schools really start to invest. It's been a lot of fun to see schools invest in, um, ways to get that platform more stable because Mm -hmm. yeah, we've seen schools start with, Hey, we're in the gym. The only place we got is the top of the bleachers. 
And so whenever somebody goes running down the bleachers, you see, boom, 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 like you see it on sh- shaking the camera. But as we have seen some schools, um, I'll, I'll give some examples. Uh, Johnson County Central here, I think it was last year, they got they got a whole new side built out for them. So they have all of their equipment, and it's a really handy setup for for what they're doing. Uh, but they have this this really nice space, and they have a platform that is built on top of the bleachers. But it kind of gives that that cushion um, mm-hmm. instead of being just on the bleachers. Uh, I literally just saw, as we record this, I just saw this morning, Superior has built out uh, two little separate, um, almost cages. Uh, they made it uh, OSHA compliant even. Like, we've got actual handrails. Oh, nice. And uh, nobody's fallen out of that thing without, <laughs> you know, yeeting themselves off the edge. Being pushed. Um, or being pushed. <laughs> that, that's, please don't push your people out of the... Um, Broadcast booth, um, but it but it's a it's a dedicated space and it's a dedicated uh, uh, section off of the bleachers. Um, Johnson Brock has one as well, uh, you know, and, and different places. You know, everybody's gym or 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 football press box is all set up differently. So um, it 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 is worth it. I, I guess the point of saying all that is it is worth it to invest in some sort of platform that can give you. Uh, the best possible use for your camera tripod. Even if you're not on the nice fluid head tripod, yeah. giving yourselves the best chance to have a good camera experience. Um, it is definitely, definitely worth it. And I'm so sorry, I really jumped on, on point four. So if you would like to take point six, um, please, please go for it. Oh, you're totally fine. It's just leveling it. Level your tripod. Nobody wants to watch a out of whack video. Caddy Wampus. Caddy Wampus video. Level your tripod now. Okay. All right. Now, now Dad's coming out. Okay. There. Well. Okay. Okay. Level your tripod. It'll make the viewing experience a lot better. So, other than this, all sounds good. Mm-hmm. Sounds great. But. Where, if we're, if we, if say I'm a school or a person that's doing a live stream with just a photo video or a a photo tripod, Mm -hmm. what, what, what are the next steps? What, what should I do? I mean, I, maybe I don't have $200 to go out and get a fluid head tripod. Well, then you got to do some advertising dollars to have funds to buy a new tripod. That works. Okay. That, yeah, that it, it is worth it. I, I. I would tell any school this, no matter where you are at in your in your process of, of building your live stream production, it is it is always going to be worth it to go to the next step, whatever the next step is for you. Um, I I haven't seen I haven't seen anybody uh, go from a photo tripod to a video tripod and then. A month later, go email me back and go, ah, man, this is not what we thought it was going to be. This is this is just not, it's just not the thing. It is the thing, it, 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 like it like it always is, right? Um, so it is it, to a certain extent, though, it is um, just a tool, and and you still mm-hmm. have to use it correctly. And I think that's still the the teaching process of how to use one of these things correctly. And that yeah. is like. It's not just, oh, we bought the thing, so now everything's going to be better. No, we have to learn how to use right. it. Right. Yep. Um, we, can't, we can't just buy the latest blocking sled for the football team and expect the, the linemen to be better blockers, right? No, we have, we have offensive line and we have coaches to coach the players on how to use the new tool so that they do better in the game. It's the exact same thing when we're talking about live stream equipment and your live streaming team. Um, we have one more point here, and it's not necessarily about a tripod, but it does have three. Jordan, we have more props. You ready for this? I'll let you get rid of that one. And we will present on our main camera this. And this is this too tall? It is not. Okay. So this, as you can see, only has one leg. Um, What are these down here? Those are feet. Ah. One leg, three feet. This would be considered a monopod. Um, And what is... Very cool about this is uh, it does have the three feet. And so we have seen, I've seen photographers use a monopod, especially as lenses, the really big lenses become slightly more mainstream to use. Those lenses are huge and heavy. And yeah. and it's just not feasible to have, um, have your camera on a, uh, without some sort of 
stabilizing device because you're not going to hold it steady enough. So I have seen stick monopods that are more or less a walking stick uh, with a quarter 20 thread on the top. And, uh, and they work great to just prop your camera. And that's a great start for, for schools that are investing equipment to have a sideline camera or a secondary camera that is going to be more mobile, mm-hmm. but you still want it stable. Again, I'll, by and large, we're dealing with camcorders uh, at the high school broadcasting level. We're not to a shoulder mount rig. Uh, in a big, uh, big Ursa camera, right? So we don't have that. So we have to kind of, what's the go-between? It's a monopod. And so what we first saw and and experimented with, because we had some, was just the stick monopod. And, and it's one point of contact with the ground, and it's one, literally just the quarter 20 thread goes directly into the camera, There's and it extends out, and that's it. It's just a way to set your camera. You still have to do all of the movement, but you have to do it with the fact that you have one point of contact. Then we discovered these. And thank you, Ben Mohorn, for for getting us into that world because these things have feet. And, Jordan, these things are awesome. Uh, It was a game changer for us. Absolutely. It was was actually (laughs) kind of mind-blowing. Yeah. But, yeah, it – you know, the panning and tilting, They've this this one has a fluid pan down below. Um, This is a Manfrotto – Element M2, I believe, is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a little on the shorter side, so you uh, challenged their height height challenged people would find that uh, this one right for them. But it it has a fluid fluid head up here, and it just made things so much easier um, down on the court and underneath the hoop and getting those free throw shots and stuff like that without having that stick fly out and right. hit the ref. and So what we discovered was, because there's literally two there's two pieces, so our pan and tilt that we showed you on the big tripod, actually uh, your pan is handled by a fluid component down here at the bottom, so I can turn this whole top while my feet stay steady, and then I have a tilt component that is also fluid head up top here. And so the whole thing, thank you, uh, so now I have pan and tilt while keeping a steady base, and I can keep the feet on the floor. So now I have basically the benefits of a fluid head tripod mm-hmm. that we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes uh, wrapped up in a monopod. Now, would I want to use this monopod, uh, this particular monopod, for my main camera shot for the day? No. Um, that you, Because at some when you extend this out, you still have to hold it steady. There is a leveling yeah, component can, that you still have to do. Yeah, the, it can do. <laughs> but so it can go like day. that. And what's cool is if you, if you kind of practice with this, and I've seen some of the pros kind of do this, is they will uh, actually get some sweeping kind of shots while keeping that, uh, that on the floor. And uh, it, it, it just uh, – that one's really tight right now. It needs some oil. We need, we need some more fluid in there. It's a little dusty, too, because it has been used uh, a great many times. That got bent even. Look at this. We have put this thing through the ringer. Used and abused. I, w- I know this isn't a review podcast, but um, I, thoughts? I, my, I don't – I'm a taller person, so it doesn't get as high as I'd like it, but that's not the main reason why I have a little bit of beef with it, I guess is that it's because of the, the fluid, the panning happens down here mm-hmm. and the tilting happens up here. And so what happens is you actually have to use your hand here to pan it. And I, I'm not a fan of that. I'd like to control everything here while my hand is now I'm unscrewing the whole thing. But yeah, right. it's And so like the monopod or the Milibu monopods, right. they're much beefier and they can get up to like six foot or something like that. But they have everything built in in the head. Right. And it doesn't have the panning down here. I guess there, there might be some people that would like that, but I just, right. I wasn't a huge fan of it. Right. These monopods, we have these on striveav.com. We do. Uh, and th- they are pretty handy. This one does have the three sections that extend. Uh, a wrist strap, um, easy enough to use. My fourth grade son uh, literally used it at the Heartland game. On, on this past Saturday, and if a, if I can teach my fourth grader how to use it moderately correctly, you can teach your high school students how to use it because it's uh, but it is a, a, a great piece of uh, of technology that is super handy to have. And the three feet, just a a lot more stable platform. So that is everything we know about tripods. If I dare you to find another tri- uh, podcast or video podcast, 
video podcast? Yeah. I dare you to find another one that can talk about tripods for 30 minutes because you won't find it. That is the most in most in-depth conversation you will ever see about tripods. And we thank you for being with us today on the Tech and Teaching Podcast. Coming up, more of these great episodes and uh, on the social medias as well. Uh, striveav.com is our website to uh, to find some of these links. We'll have the, that link in the show notes. And um, what do you want to talk about next week, Jordan? Ooh, that's a good question. So we've I, done I zoom controllers, and we've done tripods slash monopods. So we're building out kind of the camera rig. It kind of feels like well, we, we, we need a – we don't have a camera yet. So all this mm. stuff is kind of... Well, we got three of them shooting, so I don't know how we're going to do that. <sighs> we should talk about cameras next we're week. We're going to talk about cameras next week. Okay, you should order some so we have something to play yep. with. Okay. okay, cool. I can do that. Thanks for watching us and listening to us on the Tech and Teaching Podcast. We will see you again for the next show.